it over? Okay, this is it.
Glad that's over. That's over. me from my ethereal wanderings. Luzar. What kind of beast is this? Hmm. Pat's all tech. I can share my wanderings with you. But first, I seek the knowing, the truth of nature held within your ark. You want to answer? So I will ask. Answer these questions true sweet beast, so that your ark may be known, and your eye may open. And do choose wisely. Answer from your heart. You are a key witness in the trial of a thief. The thief stole money from a market, but then donated all of the stolen coin to a neglected orphanage. Telling the truth, even the whole truth, will end with the thief in jail and the stolen coin returned to its proper owners. Do you report the thief, or allow the poor orphans to keep the coin? 
You'd be surprised how little I hear that response. Imagine you are the immortal Empress, but the secret of your immortality, and the immortality of all who pledge fealty to you, is gone. The Thane is dead, and soon, all who are immortal will become mortal again. If you reveal this, you risk the loss of all your power. Do you tell your people the truth, or do you try to find another way? Oh, what fun this is! The Krell King comes to you for a boon. A twisted fruit that will slay his enemies. By giving him this, you will end a war that has lasted many years, but you will sentence another to certain death. Do you give the king the means to kill his enemies, or do you send them away and risk war? with an immortal. Your love for them is so strong, you know them to be your destiny. To be with them, you may eat from the tree of life and become immortal as well, but your family and everyone else you care for cannot partake. They must grow old and eventually die. Do you abandon your mortal family or live out your days without your one true love? Your family are starving. One day, you're out foraging for food when a huge sack of coin falls off the back of a cart. This would be a great boon to your family, but the money belongs to someone else. You have but only a moment to call out and return the coin. Do you keep the money or call out and return it to its owner? I see. You have chosen your path, sweet beast. Your heart is true. May the power of the Doe's Eye free you from your incarnate shackles. In the arc of every being, there are two eyes. We may see out of either, but most favor one over the other. The Ravager's eye is dynamic, driven, and endlessly hungry. Yet for all its power, its vision is clouded. The eye of the Ravager rarely sees beyond its own satiation. Like an animal chasing its tail, it knows no rest. The Doe's eye sees only what is before it. The gift of the Doe is subtle, easily missed. It is a most mysterious presence inside oneself, conferring power without force. Just as the Doe itself cannot be sought, nor tracked, nor hunted. By answering true, sweet beast, you give me a wink, and now, the gifts of your dominant eye will be open to you. Hmm. Would you care to hear a tale? It is about those who see as you do. I will tell you of Ramaril, the servant child of the Vaunt. I found Ramaril as a babe large and angry as only a hungry babe can be. Nothing became of him as it happened. He grew from a great crying babe to a great quiet pan. He served without word or complaint. None knew his name, for though one might thank the creator of a meal or a washroom, who even considers the child who merely cleans up after? When the Krell came, they laid siege to the temple. None could escape nor call for help. All were doomed. The Doe's eye opened in Ramaril that day. 
He was no fighter and had no training of any kind. But he lifted the largest shield he could find and told the others to run once he'd made away. He drove dozens of Krell over a cliff and himself with them. Later, his masters came to me seeking to know more of this boy who had saved them, whom I had laid at their doorstep. I told them many stories. One might even consider them true. Is there anything else? Knowledge of me? Of our wonderful world? You stand before Mirdra, spirit of the natural world, daughter of stem and stream. My sisters and I are the glorious weavers of all wild beauty. When mountain, spring, and sturdy tree trunk take your breath, sweet beast, that is us. That is our blessing. An immeasurable number. Mother Stem and Mother Stream rely on us to sprawl and grow. Though we don't often commune with beasties such as you. Not in this age. Especially not since what happened to Keula. A tragedy, beast. Tragedy most cruel. Keula was fascinated by mortals by your lives and stories. Unlike most of us, she made herself no secret, and you worshipped her with your short lives, even built her a house, a temple, you called it. The Root found her there. We godlings are not easily unwoven, however, and it slew her not, but perhaps it would be better if it had. For what remains is no longer the sister I knew. But we hold happy thoughts. Regret only wastes one life with another. Is there something else we can talk about? By day, a dappled glade of emerald branch and golden leaf, carpeted by downy moss. By night, by night, sweet beast, the trees bewitch the lost and inebriated. Or so it was before this age of extermination. How I long to return to play. This age, for me, holds only decay. The moon is power, beast. A superior moon is potent. A blood moon, infinitely more so. The moon hunts close to Yesha. When he does, his pull on both the tides and your mortal instincts is more intense. And when the Lady Sun joins, the concoction is cosmic. The ancients called it the Wounded Brightness. The Blood Moon heralds the beginning of an end. None know. It changes from age to age. But it is always something big, sweet beast. The Blood Moon promises a show of shows. Now, have I yet sated your hunger for knowledge? Or is there more, you would ask? Go with the grace of the doe, sweet beast.
Well, at least that's over.
Gives me the creeps. <laughs> <laughs> 